And I love the black and white. Oh, okay. <laughs> black and white, please. <laughs> When we were on hiatus for Stranger Than Paradise, because that film was shot, the first half hour was shot in 1982, and we, it took us, you know, till 1984 the, to get the rest of the money so we could shoot the rest of the film. So during that time, I worked in a Xerox shop. It was called Todd's Copy Shop, and I worked with Kim Gordon from um, Sonic Youth. So it was sort of, sort of an epicenter of a lot of artists coming in because it was also one of the first shops in New York to have color Xerox. I remember Robert Frank came to, to do some Xeroxing, and Todd kicked him out and thought he was a bum. So there were all gen different generations of people. Allen Ginsberg would come in and Xerox his poems, and then, you know, and then you had all the whole punk scene. And so Sleepwalk, I would get mesmerized by the machines, by the the flash of the machines and then and then it would, it would sort of be a little bit trippy and then I'd go outside and I'd see something I had been thinking about that would echo. So it was also about being hypnotized by machines and they look so primitive now when you look at the film. New York is almost like an addiction. It sort of steals your heart very early on. You can go to museums, you can go to a theater, you can just walk the streets of New York and see so many different kinds of people. It's just every day you get a, some sort of gift, of some visual gift in, that, in the city. And um, my old friend, uh, Joe Strummer, he used to say, no input, no output. So New York is, is a great place to get input. Hi! Welcome to TV Party, the TV show that's a cocktail party, but which could be a political party. Thank you very much. Oh, there he is standing in the back, Jean de New Orleans. After Hurricane Sandy, which hit the Lower East Side in New York, I went over to Alexis Adler, who had lived with Jean-Michel when he was 18 and 19. And she said, you know, Sarah, I suddenly remembered I have this work that Jean-Michel left here when he moved out. And, and, and it's in a bank vault, and it freaked me out because I thought that maybe the vault had gotten flooded because that whole area where she lived was flooded by Hurricane Sandy. And I was like, wow, I really want to see these. And she said, yes, and I found photographs, too, that I took of him. She showed me everything, and I just went, oh my god, I could do like a 20-minute poem about the very beginning, the very beginning drawings and inspirations of Jean-Michel and the development of his style, and about our city, about New York. Because it influenced all of us, and it sure influenced him. Don't let her get excited. Well, that's what they, that's what they always said. She just does. I remember when I, when I first read that story, it's, um, it's like a seven page story, and the script was 12 pages, I think. Um, I wanted to make a film that was exactly like the moment I read that story, where I was in shock at the end. It's like, what happened? And I wanted, I didn't want to analyze it. I didn't want to look into her, her mental state. I didn't, I just wanted to tell the story exactly how Paul Bowles had laid it out. The only real difference is I couldn't afford a train wreck. And the car, the cars, I bought three cars for $50. They brought them to my location and then I had a bunch of firemen who needed training to blow them up. So that whole scene cost me $150. <laughs> When I think about a film, I dream the film before I can make it. So I think about the visual, I think about the color palette. Having had you know, some experience with dance, that idea of dancing with the, the camera and the actors, I think one of the most extraordinary films in that regard is Claire Denis' No Fear, No Die.
I am truly independent. I mean, there, there's like independent studios. Like Miramax, I'm an independent studio. Um, the word independent has been usurped. Um, but, you know, I, I have to raise my own financing. I, you know, put together my own little crew. I don't let anybody have final cut. And if structure or something is being imposed w on me, I step away from whatever the financing situation is or, uh, and try to do it as in the way I want to do it, which I've been very successful at, and I've made very few films as a result.